Hello guys and welcome to another episode of special podcast in this part 2 podcast we're going to be talking about shoulder blocks uh last week we spoke about suprascapular nerve block and axillary nerve blocks and in this podcast we'll be talking about some landmarks and the peripheral nerve stimulator approach to these blocks so in the scapula the most important structure palpable at the back is the spinal scapula it has got two edges one is the medial edge that you can easily palpate and the other is the lateral edge formed by the acromion process now acromion itself is a flattened bone and it has three edges one is the medial edge the second is the anterior edge and the third is the lateral edge and posteriorly it continues with the spinal scapula the last thing you need to know is the inferior angle of the scapula the many approaches described to the suprascapular nerve block myers price shiguchi's matsumoto's and many others but we'll be focusing upon these approaches mentioned here so in the myers or the price approach the patient is positioned sitting with the neck flexed and the arm resting on the opposite shoulder this helps in making the uh, side of the uh, scapula in which we are interested a bit more prominent now the landmarks we need to identify is the acromion process shown here at the lateral edge of the scapular spine the second being the medial edge of the scapular spine we combine these two points to get the spine of the scapula choose a point at the midpoint of this line and then put the needle 2 cm cranially and 2 cm medially uh, to the midpoint of the spine of the scapula so we choose a 100 mm short bevel insulated needle uh, and this is directed in a chordo lateral direction towards the humerus at an angle of about 45 to 60 degrees uh, to the horizontal plane and what we are aiming towards is the uh, suprascapular notch where the suprascapular nerve lies once we stimulate the nerve we will get shoulder abduction as shown here once we stimulate the nerve the shoulder abduction is produced which makes the arm move out and easily helps in identifying uh, that we are very close to the nerve in the cheguchi's approach uh, is a very landmark intensive approach and therefore we need to precisely be able to know all the landmarks this shows the acromion clavicle coracoid process and the uh, head of the humerus um for this approach Uh, the patient is positioned in the lateral position in lying down therefore this is most commonly performed um in patients who have had general anesthetic and is also commonly performed by the surgeons as shown here uh the boundary of the trapezius muscle can be easily seen here the next thing we need to identify is the acromion process and the spine of the scapula anteriorly you might be able to palpate the clavicle as well So in the acromion process you need to palpate the medial border of the acromion process come 2 cm uh medial to it and 2 cm cranial to the uh edge of the spine of the scapula and insert your needle vertically or horizontally uh in this patient because this patient is uh lying down going towards the base of the coracoid process which is the same as the suprascapular notch In Matsumoto's approach the patient is sitting with the neck flexed you palpate the posterolateral edge of the acromion and the medial border of the spine you combine these two lines next you choose a point uh, which is the midpoint of this uh, uh, spine of the scapula and you choose another point 2 cm cranial to it and this would essentially uh, give you your uh, needle entry point Now you need to use the same needle 100 mm insulated short bevel uh, needle and you're directing your needle uh about 60 degrees in the uh parasagittal plane keeping your needle uh in the parasagittal plane itself you're hoping to hit the base of the coracoid process or the suprascapular notch because it's almost the same thing and you're dumping in your local anesthetic in there 
Now for the axillary nerve block, you need to block the nerve near the quadrangular space. And we had spoken about uh, the quadrangular space in the last podcast as well. Uh, it is bounded superiorly by teres minor, inferiorly by teres major, medially by the long head of triceps and laterally by the humerus. And through which the axillary nerve comes out laterally, supplying the deltoid muscle and the shoulder joint. Uh, and also is accompanied by the posterior circumflex humeral artery. Now, in the price approach to axillary block, there are two landmarks to be palpated. First is the posterior lateral edge of the acromion, and the second is the inferior angle of the scapula. You join these two uh, points, uh, um, and the midpoint of this uh, line is chosen through which a horizontal line is drawn. Uh, let's call the first line as line A and the second line as line B. Now we drop a vertical from line A and we call that line C. The intersection of line C and B give us the needle insertion point which approximately correspond to the quadrangular space. Having a look at this in the patient itself, you can easily feel three landmarks medial edge, acromion and the inferior angle. You first draw a line between acromion and inferior angle which is line A. At the midpoint you draw a horizontal line which is line B and then you drop a perpendicular from A uh, getting a line C and the intersection of line B and C is the needle entry point. Now in Shiguchi's approach uh, it's not very different from Price's approach but he used slightly different landmark. He uses uh, the acromion process and the olecranon as a two landmark and draws a line which is vertically passes through it. Next he identifies the axillary fold or the axillary crease and draws a horizontal line uh, passing through the top of the axillary fold. So let's call the vertical line line A and the horizontal line line B. Uh, two centimeters above the intersection of these two lines is the needle insertion point which again approximately corresponds with the quadrangular space and where the axillary nerve lies. Having a look at this point in the patient, you can see the acromion process and the olecranon as shown here and the axillary fold is identified. Next you drop a perpendicular from acromion to olecranon line A and a horizontal through the top of the axillary fold line B and you choose a needle entry point two centimeters above the intersection of these two lines. What you need to use is about 50 millimeters insulated needle uh, and once you stimulate the axillary nerve you will get a deltoid evoke motor response. If you do not get a twitch you just hit the bone, withdraw the needle and inject your local anesthetic. So to summarize for the suprascapular nerve block We've got the Myers or Price approach uh, and the Matsumoto's approach in which the patient is sitting. The Shaguchi's approach, the patient is in lateral position uh, and lying down. The evoke motor response uh, is the uh, abduction on the shoulder uh, and you give about 10 to 15 mils of local anesthetic uh, after uh, getting the evoke motor response. For the axillary block you have the price approach in which the patient is sitting and the Shiguchi's approach in which the patient is lying down again. Uh, the evoke motor response is delta twitch and you give in about 10 to 15 mils of local anesthetic. So that is it folks. If you did like this podcast then do share it on different social platforms and what we've also done is put up new iTunes podcast that I will provide a link to you soon. Thank you and goodbye. Mm -hmm.